everyone, and welcome to Groove Builders, the show where we create together. I'm your host, Disorderly Cone, and in this episode, we're going to be building the very beautiful and blingy Phoenix Cornet from Peace Cool. Now, I know what you're thinking. Where did I get that? Well, I got it from our friends over at Crazy Toys. And if you haven't checked out their website yet, you definitely should. They got all kinds of really cool models on there. Some of them kind of hard to find with really good prices and fast shipping. If you're looking to pick up the Phoenix Coronet today, just look in the description down below for a direct link to their website. Now, Groove Builders, this build looks very detailed. And if I'm not mistaken, it might be our most detailed model yet. Let's get down to the workbench and take a look at it together. Groove Builders, welcome to the workbench. This is our Peace Cool Cornet. And I have to admit, this is probably the most blinged out build we've done here so far on the channel. Let's go ahead and take a look at the back. On the back, we get a good look at our metal, followed by another look at our Cornet. Then, just here on the bottom left, we have a QR code which we can scan to get a 360 view of our model and also a direct link to the Peace Cool's website within WeChat. Groove Builders, let's not waste any more time and go ahead and open up our package. Oh wow, look at that. We have our metal all nice and wrapped up. And we have our instructions. Quite a lot here. Sir, oh wow, look at these. These must be all the balls we're gonna connect onto our cornet. Really cool stuff. Some white ones here too. Is there anything else underneath here? Ah yes, look here is our stand. Well, group builders, with all of our parts out, let's get everything opened up and get building. With our metal and tools in hand, we begin our build of the Peace Cool Phoenix Cornet. And the first thing we're building is the main dome, which is actually pretty straightforward to build. We just want to take all of these strips of metal and slowly work them into a circle, connecting that back tab. Now one thing you really want to make sure is not to bend any of these little brass pieces along the tops. It may be a little bit tricky as we add more pieces on to create our dome, but it's very important. This is where we're going to put all of our little beads a little bit later, and accidentally bending these too much may cause them to break off. Once all of our strips are connected and we have our dome, it's a good idea to give them a little bit of a tug. That should get rid of any gaps or spacings between your pieces. Oh, and look, our first of many butterflies. Now the trick to forming these butterflies is to get as close as you possibly can to that fold line and then of course bend those wings up. Once you're happy with the formation, go ahead and attach it to our dome. But don't think you're done with butterflies just yet. More on them soon. These beads are a little tricky to handle because of their static, but they're secured pretty easily with just a simple bend over the bead. My suggestion is to try to make this as uniform as possible. With our dome done, we can start our butterflies. And just like before, we want to make sure that when we're doing these, we're taking them right to the fold line and bending them up. I personally recommend making them pretty skinny. And the reason for that is we're going to be putting a lot of butterflies onto this dome. And that means the real estate might get a little bit crowded. By having these butterflies skinny at first, it will allow for easy installation. And then once all the butterflies are on, we'll fluff out the wings to really make this piece possible. I agree, R2. This build is definitely not for the faint of heart, but I'm pretty sure that most people that are going to be building this with us have already built a few metal models before. Oh, R2, don't worry. I still plan to go over the instructions, and actually, speaking of which, let's go ahead and do them now. Starting at the top, we have our Peace Cool logo. Then just below, we get a good look at our Phoenix Coronet. On the right hand side we have our tools and here is where we're going to talk about something a little bit different. You may have noticed over the last couple of videos that I've been using a wide variety of tools to build these metal models. And the reason for that is because I've been testing them out. You see Groove Builders, there's a wide variety of tools out there to help you build these metal models. But all of these tools do very specific things and they can't be used in every single situation. My plan once everything comes together is to hopefully release three different videos showing you how to use different metal model tools when you're building. Now Groove Builders, these will be arranged from beginner all the way up to expert. But again, these are only tool recommendations recommendations, and you really don't ever need more than just a pair of tweezers and wire cutters to get the job done. 
Okay, now with all that said, let's get back to the Phoenix Cornet and the tools that I'm using to build it. The tools that are recommended from Peace Cool to build this model are the previously mentioned needle nose pliers and of course wire cutters. The wire cutters are very useful for cutting all of our parts out of the metal sheet, but it is very important that we make sure to get as close as we possibly can to the part before cutting it out. You see, the little bits of metal that are left over on the part, these are called burrs, can get in the way of connecting our pieces together, which is not only frustrating sometimes, but also can affect the overall look of our model in the end. So really try to get as much of that extra metal off as possible. Next, we have our needle nose pliers, which are very useful for helping us form our pieces and also getting those hard to reach tabs in the upper part of the dome. Now in my videos, I rarely do use needle nose pliers because I have a good collection of tweezers to help me bend all of my pieces. Groove builders, I definitely recommend getting a good set of tweezers out there to help you build this build. And I really do mean a good strong set. A lot of the times the tweezers that come with these kits are really flimsy and you won't be able to bend any of the parts properly when trying to use these. Save yourself the frustration, go to Walmart and find a good set of tweezers there. You'll thank yourself in the end. One tool that you can't find at Walmart that is extremely useful is this steel pencil tool. You see, this tool is very useful for grabbing all of our tabs and securing them together extremely tightly. Groove builders, I can't recommend this tool enough. It makes it really easy to grab all those hard to reach tabs and securing them tightly is a breeze. The only issue that I run into is that sometimes I can accidentally over tighten the tabs causing them to break. So groove builders, if you do pick up this tool, make sure that you have that little bit of caution in your head when you go to secure the tabs. Finally, the last tool that I used to help me build the Phoenix Cornet was our doming set. Now, typically this doming set I'll use to help me build domes like R2-D2s or cylinders, say for a building. In this build, I use my biggest doming tool to get that really nice shape on the main dome. Again, it's not necessary to have this tool to build this model, but it does make it a little bit easier to get that nice shaping that we want. Moving right along, just below our recommended tool section, we have some instructions on how to build our Phoenix Cornet. Starting with A, we've actually already touched on this, and it's just warning us to make sure that we cut as close as we possibly can to our part to avoid those burrs. B shows us what our insertion tabs, fold lines, and insertion holes look like. These are very important to understand because this is what we're going to use to build our cornet. Now C tells us it's very important to make sure that when we're bending our parts to go right up close to those fold lines, just like I was saying earlier with our first butterfly that we were bending. Folding your pieces at the fold line, make sure that all of your parts are uniform. Keep in mind that this model was designed on a computer and it counts on you being precise with your bending in order for everything to fit together. If you accidentally bend a part slightly out of its bend line, you might find that it's just a little bit short when it comes to inserting a tab into an insertion hole, and that can really throw off your entire model. Finally, we have the almighty circle and triangle. Both of these symbols are critical for helping us build our coordinate, and they tell us what to do with our tabs once we've connected our pieces together. When we encounter our circle, we want to grab as much of our tab in our tweezers as possible, or in our steel pen, and then bend it 90 degrees over onto the part. When we see our triangle, we want to grab as much of a tab in our tweezers as possible, or in our metal pen as possible, and then twist it 90 degrees. Personally, I always recommend following the instructions when it comes to securing our tabs. And then at the very end, once everything is connected, go over your model and see if there's anything you can change to make it look a little bit better. If you do this beforehand, sometimes your pieces may not go together, or you'll find the actual model falling apart in your fingertips. Below our instructions and to the left, we have some precautions, and these are really important to know when it comes to building the coronet. The first two icons we're gonna look at in the precaution area is the black and white speech bubbles. Both of these mean engraved and non-engraved sides. These are very important to follow because they tell you what side of the part you need to shape. Nothing is worse than forming a part completely only to find out the part is inside out. Now you run the risk of breaking your parts as you reshape everything the opposite way. Save yourself the struggle and double check the instructions for these little bubbles. The next two precaution icons we have are the attention to detail and symmetry icons. 
both of these are less encountered than our two speech bubbles, but also are equally as important. The attention icon tells us that the part we're putting together might be a little bit more complicated, or you might run the risk of breaking a piece if you're not careful. Always just give a little bit more attention if you encounter this symbol. The next one, the symmetry icon, lets us know that it's very important to line up our parts perfectly before moving on to the next step. Now again, these two are less encountered, but that doesn't mean that they are less important. And lastly, we have our part sheet. Here is where we'll find all of our parts needed to build the Phoenix Cornet, and there's quite a bit here. The very important thing to keep in mind is that all of our colors here represent parts that are exactly the same. Let's look at part number 12. There you'll see a line leading right to a purple part. Now that part is part 12, but also any of the other purple pieces are part 12 as well. And with that Groove Builders, I think we've pretty much summed up our instructions. Is there anything I left out, R2? Ah, that's also a good question. What exactly is a Phoenix Cornet? For that, we have to turn to ancient China, and you may have noticed this is looking a lot like a crown. And you're right. Wearing crowns in ancient China was a sign of status, especially for women like the queen, imperial concubines, and government relatives. Starting from the Han Dynasty, phoenix-shaped ornaments became very popular with the upper classes, and that led to crowns being made with phoenixes and later coronets. By the Tang Dynasty, when Empress Wu Zetian became the first female ruler in China's history, the phoenix became the number one magical bird. Beginning from the Song Dynasty, the phoenix coronet was made into the official crown and costume, and it became the formal coronet of aristocrats. In addition, other people were prohibited to wear the phoenix coronet without permission. This later led to the coronet system of the Ming Dynasty. Just looking at some of the coronets that we found from past times, it's absolutely amazing to see the amount of detail that went into them. And I completely understand why Peace Cool wanted to feature one of them in their models. Wow, look at this! We did it, Groove Builders! We built the Phoenix Cornet from Peace Cool! And to be totally honest, if I don't see another bead or butterfly for the next few builds, that'll be totally okay with me. But I did have a lot of fun building this build, and there's a few things you're going to want to know if you're looking to do it yourself. Let's talk about those things in construction. My first point when it comes to building the Phoenix Cornet is to make sure you're following the instructions closely when it comes to tab securement along the top here. Now, I made the mistake of accidentally twisting half of my flowers and I had to go back later and bend all those tabs. And one thing I realized as I was bending my tabs is that they were breaking very easily. So I had to rebuild some of my flowers. Groove builders, avoid doing this and follow the instructions closely the first time. You don't wanna do what I did. My second point is about securing all of these beads onto the coronet. There's two basic ways that we do this. The first way, we put our bead onto the coronet and then take a piece of metal and bend it over the bead. Now, Groove Builders, I recommend going through all of your beads and bending them the same way. This creates a really nice uniform look over your piece. The second way we secure our beads is by feeding the bead through the metal and then feeding the metal back onto itself, creating a bit of a teardrop, if you will, where a piece can dangle in between. Now, Groove Builders, you will have to have some pretty handy tweezers to help you with this step. But once you do one or two, I found it was really easy to get the rest of them. For my third and final point, I want to talk about all of this dangling detail. And yes, there is quite a bit of it. Every piece that you see moving here is held in place by a loop that has a cut in it. That a cut allows you to put your detail onto the coronet, but it also makes it very difficult for all these pieces to stay on. So my suggestion is to really make sure that all of these little loops are closed, which will take a little bit more time, but it'll be worth it in the end when none of your pieces are falling off. And with that being said, group builders, let's move on to build time. The Peace Cool Coronet took me just over 15 hours to build, with the majority of that time being spent, of course, on the beadwork and all of this dangling detail. Now, Groove Builders, my personal recommendation is to build this in stages, and don't try to build everything at the same time. If you do, you might find yourself getting a little bit overwhelmed, and that will definitely impact the end model. So take your time and really enjoy this build. And finally, Groove Builders, my thoughts. The Phoenix Cornet is a very interesting model. Between all the butterflies, the beads, and well, that, 
there's a lot going on here. So what do I think? Well, I think this is a very unique one-of-a-kind model that is very interesting for the average builder to take on. This model is designed very well, and I never found myself actually having a hard time getting my pieces to come together. Everything just seemed to fit which is quite a feat when you think about how much detail is involved in here. Now, that being said, some of my beads did not have a hole going all the way through, but they did supply me with enough beads that that wasn't really a problem. The only thing I didn't like about this build was all the repeat detailing that we have to do. It can get really boring bending our butterflies and, of course, our flowers here at the top. But if you're patient and take your time, you really are rewarded with a great one-of-a-kind looking model. Now, can I recommend this for new builders out there? No, no, I really can't. There's just too much here for really a new builder to be able to handle on their first go. I think a lot of people will get really frustrated with some of the detailing along the back here, and of course, all these little flowers. Now, after you get a couple of them down, sure, it can get a lot easier. But if you've never built a metal model before, there's just a lot of mounds to climb with this build. Now, if you have a couple of models under your belt, and you're looking to add something that's a little bit blingy to your collection, I would say look no further than the Phoenix Cornet. You're not gonna be let down. And with that, Groove Builders, we're at the end of our show. I had a really good time building the Phoenix Cornet with you, and if you guys had a good time, don't forget to press that like button. For more videos like this, hit subscribe as well, as we got all kinds of really cool content coming out in the future. Until next time, Groove Builders, keep building. Talk about bling, right?